in Britain. Let's not get political. Lovely day, wouldn't it? Let's not. Let's get. Yeah. Can't help it, can you? Everyone's political at the moment. With. Uh, well, it's not even politics, is it? It's about hypocrisy. It's about why should we do what we're told if they're not? It's as simple as that. You've got to, you've got to lead by example. Um, everyone agrees. Everyone agrees. Hello. Uh, I did ask for questions. I've got quite a few questions. Let's do that first, shall we? Let's try and get some sort of <laughs> structure. At least let's achieve something quickly before I start looking at celebrity coughing a drain. You could do a jingle. Oh, celebrity cocking a drain. Oh, who's that? So uh, that's the. Oh, why did I? I said let's let's do something right. Let's do something real. Um, uh, just Miss Emma says, who has been the single biggest influence throughout your career? Uh, I'd say Christopher Guest. Um, yeah. I mean, just because oh, before I met him, before I was even involved in this, and then getting to know him, and he was a, a mate and an advisor, uh, a mentor and everything, and uh, yeah, just from everything from that, that sort of acting style to that love of silliness. Um, yeah, I'd say, I'd, say, uh, I'd say Christopher Guest. Thanks for asking. Uh, Les Harland, when you're unemployed and obviously down about life, what kept you going? I wasn't, you know, I wasn't down about life. I was, I, I never had any money growing up, never had money at school. Uh, when I went to university, uh, because I had a grant, I think that was the richest I'd ever been. I worked out I could spend five pounds a day. And that was, I mean, I couldn't spend five, I couldn't spend five pounds a week before that. Um, and then obviously, uh, yeah, on the dole with no money, pretty much till I was 28. I got a, a low paid job. So I'd say I was, I was poor to average till I was in my thirties, easily. Uh, but I never felt down. I was sort of, you survived, you may do. I mean, I always thought a job was something that gave you enough money to have a, have a drink and that was somewhere to live and see your way. Um, I was bad when I was really poor and I couldn't buy a round. My mates would buy me a round and go, don't worry about it. That's, that, that's when you, oh, fuck, really? Yeah, that, that, that's when you, you know, but uh, no, I, I was never... Never done that. I didn't know I was poor till I was, I don't know, 16. I didn't, everyone was in the same boat. Um, but it's a good question. What kept me going? I, 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 you know, just what, 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 what should I do next? You know, hope. Um, you know, you want to improve, you improve your, your life always. Have more fun. Do, do more of what you'd like to. It was always just to be happy. It was to have fun every day. And if I could do that on, 20 quid a week or 20,000 quid a week, it didn't really matter. So it still doesn't, still doesn't. Being happy is happy. Uh, if you're happy, you're happy. Doesn't matter what, do you know what I mean? Um, would you consider doing an afterlife spin-off? I would actually, I'm definitely gonna end it after this, I think. Um, but it is a waste. There's so many good characters. And that's why I'm doing a third for the first time, because there's so many rich characters. Usually in a sitcom, you get a couple of, you know, a main one and then a couple of great support ones. But there's about six to eight in this that could have their own spin-off sitcom or, or whatever. Um, but what I'd consider is giving someone else the, uh, the okay to do it. Otherwise, I might as well carry on. I want to do something new, but yeah, I'd love it. I'd love it if one of the actors said, can I, you know, can I co-produce this, my spin-off of this? I've got a writer, I've got a... And I go, yeah, brilliant. That'd be lovely. 
to do that, like you know, like I did with the American office, give them permission to do it all themselves. And <laughs> um, did you do you have an actor in mind when you were writing the script? I did for this, yeah. So when you first start off in the business, like the office because that was sort of based on my experience in office. You had, I had people in mind, it was based on people. So, and I was naive. It didn't know anyone. So you cast, you try and find that person. And then, and that's hard. And some walk through the door and you think that's just like him, whoever him was. And sometimes go, oh, it's not like him, but it's good. It's just the same. And you start thinking you can't, you can't hope that someone comes to the door that looks like someone you met once. Um, and I didn't know anyone, didn't know anyone at all. Uh, the only people I'd met, I'd done a, I'd written a, um, a sketch show that Martin Freeman was involved with called Bruiser, and I thought he was great. And I uh, worked with Mackenzie Crook on the 11 o'clock show. I thought he was great. Everyone else I'd never met before or heard of, and you, you cast, right? So in the second series, it's easier because you know who you're writing for, and you promote people and go, oh, you know, a lot of them were sort of background, you know, like you and Macintosh was hired as background, and then you give him a bit one day, and he's funny, and you and you you create so only. But now I've been in the business for twenty years. I'd cast this before I, I wrote it. I called people up and said, like Kerry, do you want to play my dead wife? Do you want to be the nurse? Do you want to? And they said yes, and then I knew who I was writing for. So it's twice as easy. It's it's yeah. Um, what percentage of your globe speech were you being dead serious? None of it really. Some jokes have a truth to them. I mean, all, all, all jokes, uh, unless they're surreal or pun or just, you know, you're, or ironic. All, if I do a premise, it was a good year for so-and-so, that bit of it might be true. You're setting up for a joke or you know, or you know, it could be opinion, like aren't films awful, aren't, you know. Uh, so there's there's sort of, the things that are meant to be true are true. I don't lie. But I think what you mean in that question, oh, who asked that question? Uh, uh, Prodacat underscore Verum. I, I don't know how to put it Anyway, uh, Prodacat. Um, I think you mean... Are jokes a window to the comedian's soul? Are they his true feelings about stuff, politics or whatever? No, they're not. Um, sometimes. But I will pretend to be something I'm not if it makes the joke better. I'll pretend to be right wing or left wing or no wing if it makes the joke better. Um, it doesn't have to be... I'll say things I don't mean if it's funnier than just saying things I do mean. And it usually is. So it depends. And you hope the audience are smart enough to know when I mean it, um, when I'm uh, genuinely angry and that's me, or when I'm playing the idiot, whether I'm just being contrary, whether I'm being naughty, whether I'm saying the wrong thing on purpose, because it's funny to say the wrong thing. Uh, so it depends. I hope that's what you meant. Um, uh, Martin Gundry says, I'm begging you, please. There's a lot of spin offs here. Can we have a spin off with uh, basically um, the psychiatrist Ratty and the Noms? <laughs> well, uh, they'll be back for season three, no spoilers, but um, uh, yeah, that'd, that'd be an example. What a great spin off that would be. The, the, the psychiatrist, that sort of non-reconstructed man angry against a world that's changing that would be that would be a great that would be a great spin-off um but as i say i will be moving on but I'd, I'd love i'd love someone to do that it'd be brilliant uh yeah what made you do a season three max b shepherd after doing two seasons that really it was such a good world that i set up and it was a waste um uh, and yeah, I mean, when you think about it, also, I'd never had a global hit like this. Like The Office, my version of The Office 
was it was shown in lots of countries, but the global hit was the American version, which is great. Um, so I, I thought I thought I could. I mean, it, it was nice that you know everyone around the world was watching my version of the show all at the same time. Um, so it's sort of that as well, a little bit of that. But not much. I'm still going to finish it early. What do you think? If I do a third series, that's seven and a half hours. Seven and a half hours. I mean, some series don't. They don't only do ten series, but there's twenty episodes per series. So I'm really not milking it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Talking of which. Uh, People are starting doing their Emmy campaigns now. Uh, I've never had one. Um, as I say, it's it's always the big sort of network shows that put up the billboards and make their their actors go on chat shows. But I don't know. You could do it for me. Um, what could you do? Uh, we missed out on billboards and everything, didn't we? Because obviously no one was driving or we were going to have uh, underground things and train stations and that was all cancelled because people weren't using it so uh, but it still did okay see still did okay still did fine didn't it the show um i think they did do a couple of tv ads instead uh but yeah doesn't it do, you know word of mouth is still the greatest you can hype something but if it's shit people won't watch it they won't they won't come back they won't watch the second series it won't make its money back. Because if something's really expensive and you spend a lot of money in advertising, it's, it's like, it's got to do so much better. Um, so, uh, yeah. Do you, what can you do for my, um, what can you do for my Emmy campaign? Like, you care. <laughs> like, you care. Uh, you could do a sizzle reel. Can you? You could do a little video. You could steal. I'll give you permission. That's not for me to give. But you could. You could make your own sizzle reel. Like uh, for your consideration, Ricky Gervais, best actor in a comedy, and then just do some of it. What? Just do all the. <laughs> yes, do the sizzle reel of me laugh. Do use the me just ruining a take, laughing, right, and uh, swearing. And, and, <laughs> just the worst, it's just the weird ever, me ruining takes laughing and swearing. <laughs> That's what I want to put in for the image. Uh, same for directing. Directing, just me going, I'll do it again. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, make some Emmy campaign sizzle reels. Or, oh, I'll tell you what, uh. Um, I don't know how to rip from Netflix. You, you, you internet nerds know that. You can do it. I've seen things better than the real thing that people have done. Um, so help me my Emmy campaign, yeah. That's a good idea. Um, loads of gifts. I don't know who's done them. There's about 50 gifts from Afterlife popped up. And they're really useful. They're things like just people saying, shut up, or really, or no, or... Thank you. It's like really useful. I want to reply. I just want to use the, the gifts rather just to reply to people. Um, uh, oh, yeah, IMDb, you know, where, you know, the big thing, IMDb, I don't know what it stands for. It's, it's a website about films and acting and, and all that. And uh, there's like eight, they put about 821 photos from the show so you could you could use those to um again i couldn't i couldn't get them off there to post them i had to look at it on my phone so i could do a uh, take a picture <laughs> <laughs> fucking useless i'm absolutely fucking useless i know i am as well and i know i could learn how to do it but i can't be bothered so thank you um yeah, uh, what time is it? Quarter past. Um, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Rick, you look really slick today. I thought, thank you. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've been, been working out. 
uh, getting my vitamin D. It's nice and sunny, isn't it? Cutting my hair basically every day because I see another bit that I missed. Because I, obviously I've been cutting my hair myself and trying to see how far I can get around in the mirror. And then now again I get out of the shower and there'll be a bit. Because obviously when they cut it for real, they layer it all. Even when your hair's messed up, it's still styled. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you cut it yourself, like, like I do, so it's sort of set, right? When it goes out of place, there's bits that are longer. There's chunks that I see. I go, fucking hell, how do I cut that bit? Well, how? I mean, right? It looks... It will look shit. It looks horrible. It looks like a comb-over that's gone wrong. It's, you know those sort of words that are greasy? Like some sort of police informant in Sweeney. There's always like someone out there greasy. Like, hey, like, yeah. I know, Danny. But I want... I want immunity. Yeah, I fucking give you immunity, you know. Um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, fingers, Mulligan. Yeah, you stay here. <laughs> That's why I was never asked to be the Sweeney. Also, I was 16 and at school and not an actor. What was I saying? Oh yeah, cut my hair, it's still shit. It looks okay. It's okay like that. <laughs> but it's terrible at the back. Uh, I've got a couple more years of it, I reckon. Then it's got to be buzzed off. Thinner and thinner. Um, we always seem to wear black. Yeah, we're slimming, isn't it? Uh, been doing a lot of... Uh, been doing a lot, a, lot, a lot more in the gym. I, you know what I mean? I go out there twice sometimes, just like do five minutes, because it's you've got more time in your hands, didn't you? So, like in prison, I'm gonna come like that. Like I've been in prison for a year. Um, what do you do? Like in. Um. What was I gonna say? I think people are gonna miss this. You know, people who've got a job where they have to commute forty-five minutes. And have loads of shit meetings and the boss looking at them. Have a half hour for lunch. Fucking run across town, get a sandwich they like. And they get fucking... Oh, if, they, if, they, if they can't get away early, they hit the rush hour. They get home at seven. Have to cook. And, they, and here, they wake up. They wake up at nine. Do their first Zoom meeting with the boss. Dress from the, <laughs> the waist up. And that's it. And then they just have to be around. I think they get, and you've got more time to do stuff. That's the thing with meetings as well. Even I just thought, you've got to have a meeting. Why have you got to have a meeting? People say, oh, oh I'm in town, we need a meeting. They don't need a fucking meeting. Call me, why do you call me? You haven't called me for six months. Why, why do we have a meeting? Because you're in town. What's so important? If it was that important, you'd have called me. You don't need to have a meeting. An hour in a car, book a table. Restaurant, eating, and a meeting with somebody who's going to be fucking eating. No. I ban food, like we have a lot of read through in that. They used to leave out fucking cakes and donuts. So there's people, no, but let's, let's fucking do the read through and eat afterwards, shall we? I'm looking at that. Someone's, someone's got a chewing gum, I'm looking at that. Fucking hell. It's all the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we mixing talking with eating? It's not a war situation, do you know what I mean? Um, I started, it was a rant, wasn't it? Uh, right. Do we miss quarantine? Will anyone go, you know what? We're sort of, we're sort of all right. I've got to really fucking work on the tube. Someone's going to cough on me. The boss is, oh. I liked having one over on the boss. I liked knowing the boss knew he wasn't getting his money's worth. <laughs> you know what I mean? I bet, I bet people are thinking that. Um, yeah. Still, we're over there. I think we're over there. I hope now. Uh, as I say, let's not forget uh, how brilliant the key line, front line and key workers were. Not just 
not just nurses and doctors, but porters, cleaners, postmen. You know what I mean? Let's not forget that. Let's not suddenly just go back to... Uh, it's been amazing. I've been fucking amazing. Um, so, yeah, cheers. Cheers, guys. Anyway, got to make the most of it, yeah. Got to laugh. Uh, well, what did that achieve? Anything? I told you I got a sh shit hair. You knew that. I told you I had nothing to talk about. You fucking knew that. Started with the clock in the drain, bollocks. Me saying we're not going to talk about a clock in the drain, which is obviously talking about straight away, clock in the drain. People are tuning in for the first time, they're going, what the fuck is a clock in a drain? Pretty much says what it does on the tin, really. It is a cock in the drain. I don't make the rules. Actually, I did. I made those rules, didn't I? I invented, I invented cock in a drain. Um, <laughs> there's one good thing that's come out of the pandemic. It's, uh, it's the concept of a cock in a drain. <laughs> yeah. See all these people trying to do their little things they've done. The slogans and, and songs and, you know, sort of getting TV shows out of yeah. That'd be mine. What did you What did you do in the cock in a drain? You can have it if you want. TV idea. Welcome to cock in a drain. Um. Yeah. Well, thank you. What can you do? Yeah. Can you do some do something funny for an Emmy campaign for me or serious? I've seen some brilliant artwork actually. Genuinely, I saw a drawing today of me and the dog. Someone did uh, graphic designs. Just fucking brilliant. When you see someone, they're, they're just. For no reason, art for art's sake, just because they've got it and it, the show meant something to them, they do this thing. I think fact, that's the work of art in itself. That's brilliant. I, I, I love it. Be creative. It's, it's great. That's the, the get you through this. Being creative. Just being creative. Um, don't have to show anyone. Just have a go. Secretly write a poem or, you know. Um, yeah. Or have a drink. Uh, well, that was Sunday's sermon, wasn't it? Uh, stay safe. Oh, well, I, I'll tell you a discovery in the panel that I've played, I think, every day for the last month. It's uh, Buckingham and Nick's album uh, from 1973. Put it in YouTube, Buckingham and Nicks, you know, bleep with that. Um, every song that was a cracker, absolute cracker. So of the time, but but pretty timeless. And if you haven't heard it, um, so yeah, that's my recommendation. That's Ricky's recommendation. Stay safe, be creative, listen to Buckingham and Nicks album, 1973. It's a cracker. Um, don't forget what a great job that healthcare workers have done. They're brilliant. They're brilliant all year round. Uh, cock in a drain. <laughs> Just said it. No, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Do help me with my Miami campaign, either beautifully and intelligently or some shit ironic nonsense. I don't care. Um, what else? That'd do, wouldn't it? I'd give you something to do, wouldn't it? Oh, you needed something to do. Like, what? Oh, oh wait, give us something to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, everyone. When should we do this again? Uh, Wednesday? It's sort of settled down now, hasn't it? To Sunday, Wednesday, Friday. That seems about right, doesn't it? Um, till this is over. Uh, thank you. Tatty bye, everyone. Tatty bye.